Hell yeah, man. That's fucking. That's the best part of stand up comedy right there. Nothing else that I do can I get this many random strangers to just clap for me, bro. That's amazing. <laughs> Especially this many Caucasian strangers. That's unheard of, bro. Y'all don't just clap for brothers on the street. You don't. You make us earn it. I gotta beat you at something you didn't think I was good at, like golf or cornhole or something. <laughs> I be killing cats. They're like, God dang, that guy's good. How's he so good? I don't even, even know they played cornhole. There's not a lot of us that do. There's not. It's like, I'm like top six in the world of black dudes in cornhole out of like 13, bro. It's not a lot. I learned how to play because my dad is white. So that's, you just learn a lot of like white people's sports when your dad's white. They teach you a lot. They always want to play catch and stuff. It's a good time, man. White dads are cool. You know what I'm talking about. You got a white dad haircut. I can tell. <laughs> Our dads would hang out. They would just get mad at stuff together. It'd be a good time, man. <laughs> my dads teach you a lot, man. I liked having a white dad. It took people off guard, because like my dad is, my dad's white, all right? He's Redondo Beach white, is what I'm talking about. <laughs> He's got all the white freaking qualities. He's got amazing credit. Uh, <laughs> He's always on time, very punctual, my father. He is. He's even a ginger. Like, it doesn't get any whiter than ginger, okay? <laughs> Tall white man with freckles. Like, it looks like a 52 year old Ed Sheeran, is what we're dealing with. <laughs> and I don't get everything. Like, I don't get all of like the black qualities that I, that I need to have with having a white dad. Like, I'm super athletic, but I can't dance. You know, like, that's, <laughs> it's not fair. And my dad can dance. And it's like, I'll dance. And my dad, like, who brought the white boy? I'm like, yo, that's racist. I don't know how. I did two big things this year that I'm really happy about. I turned 31, then I got married. Those are like the two. Thank you. Most people are way more excited about the marriage than the 31, and I can tell by looking at most of y'all why, because you've been there, done that. I know. I know you know. A couple of y'all in the back are like a week away from Velcro shoes. I can see it. It's like... Yo, they built for comfort. They built for comfort. My bad, my bad. Um, young whippersnapper, my bad, man. I like being 31. It's a good age. It's a fun age to be. I'm not old, but I'm also not young, you know? Like, I'm paying my taxes. I wipe my own ass. I'm an adult, okay? <laughs> You know, on the other end, I'm not super old. Like, I'm like 31. That's nowhere near, like, creepy, like, old man status by any means, you know? But I am, you know, married to a woman still in her 20s, so eh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also a millennial. I'm also a millennial being 31, but I try not to fit, like, into the stereotypical box of being a millennial. Like, a lot of times I'll go places and I'll be like, yo, I'm not gonna bring my phone. I don't need to bring my phone. I don't need social media, Instagram, like freaking taking pictures and stuff. I got people right in front of me that I can speak to. That's what we need to do more often, man, right? yeah. But then I'll get into the car, I'll instantly realize, I don't know where the hell I'm going, ever. <laughs> no idea. How did we do this before? You remember trying to print out directions online on MapQuest like a caveman? What is that? What is this, hieroglyphics, asshole? I can't read this. What, what is an I-19? Is this bingo or is it driving? I don't know. And I trust my phone. Like, I trust my phone to a fault sometimes. Like, if my phone would have directed me to a Costco tonight, I would have just been doing this in a Costco. I would. <laughs> they would hate it. They'd be like, sir, this isn't a show. I'm like, ma'am, there's like six baskets. I'm forming a crowd. How about you stop hating and get the popping with some samples, Carol, all right? <laughs> you gonna heckle me at my own Costco show? You are something else, Carol. You are something. <laughs> Dad gets mad at me sometimes because I like I use my phone like GPS and stuff while I'm driving. He thinks I'm like distracted driving. And I'm like, Dad, if you don't recall, you had an atlas in the car all the time back in the day. I feel like that was pretty distracting. <laughs> we don't know what an atlas is, it's a book of like 98 maps that people <laughs> and my dad would bring this out while driving, okay? This is a true story. We were driving to uh, Indiana one time when I was like eight. This is where they make white people, okay? <laughs> We're driving to Indiana for Thanksgiving. They had a detour. He got upset. He's like, God, they put a detour. James Anthony passed me that atlas over there in the door. I'm like, what's the atlas? It's a book of maps, boy. Just hand it to me. I gave it to him. He's, we're going 87 miles an hour, people. Okay, he stretched this thing out across the entire windshield. While we're still going 87 miles an hour. I'm like, Dad, we're not even near Nebraska. Why would you pull this one out? 
Where did you get a highlighter from? This man has circled a new route while we're driving, while we're going 87 miles an hour. I'm like, yo, we're gonna die. We're gonna die. I've never even seen boobs at this point and we're gonna die. This is worst case scenario, man. I don't trust a lot of stuff as I get older. Like at this age, I'm very untrust, untrust, uh, what's the, untrusting? Trust, untrust, okay, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> Listen, I'm a break. Look, I am he who is without that that is the trust that is bestowed upon him from others when given at the inappropriate times. Okay, that's as yeah, that's as clear as I can make it. Yeah, figure it out. <laughs> I don't trust a lot of stuff, man. Top of my list, grown men with allergies. You're suspicious, man. For real. <laughs> Shouldn't be allowed to have you're 37? You're 37. You haven't grown out of this yet? Are you kidding me? And like, don't get me wrong, if you're allergic to like almonds or something, I could rock with that. You have an arch nemesis. Okay, that's cool. Even Batman has one of those. But you're just allergic to being outside? Screw you, dude. That's... <laughs> We're at a baseball game and you're popping Claritin. They shouldn't even let you in. <laughs> There's no way. If you bring out Claritin and security, they should be like, yo, what is it? Are these dissolvable Claritin? You trying to push this shit to kids, man? What are you doing? <laughs> Some kind of monster? You don't get to come into the game with Claritin, bruh. And I don't like those people that like sneeze a bunch when I'm next to them. Like you ever met one of those people that have like sneezing fits? It's like, hatchie, 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 hatchie. You be like, yo, just die. Just die, bro, why? <laughs> like, yo, why are we all suffering with you, man? I'll be honest with you guys. I like you guys a lot so far, but if I'm hanging out with you ever and you sneeze more than twice, I'm not blessing you no more. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. I'm not wasting my blessings on you, bro. You should have prayed today. I prayed today, man. That's, that's something you just gonna have to figure out, man. Other thing on my list of things I don't trust is uh, the board of directors for 7-Eleven. I don't like it. <laughs> for real, man, did you guys know that 7-Eleven delivers? Did y'all know that? Yeah, 7 no one asked for that. 7-Eleven <laughs> delivers. It's a convenience store, people, all right? It was literally built for our convenience. And nowadays we're so damn lazy that we were like, hey, you know it'd be even more convenient. <laughs> if you just brought it to me, like why? <laughs> why am I leaving my house, man? I'll give you my home address where my family is safe and sound. You know? When have you ever gone into a 7-Eleven and saw the people that like worked in the 7-Eleven and been like, hey man, you know what? I'd love for you to come to my house. <laughs> bring some of those Slurpees, undercooked hot dogs and scratch off tickets to the crib, baby. We'll have a party, man. <laughs> Like I said, I got married this year. That was real big for me. My wife is actually here tonight, Christina. She shouts out to her. I'm hitting that, no big deal. It's going good. If anybody is here in like a real good, solid relationship, I'll tell you guys how I proposed to this show woman before I go. I like telling this story. It's pretty dope. Strap in, people. It's getting pretty lit, all right? So uh, it was 2018, May 25th is when I proposed, and that's actually my birthday. And I proposed to her on my birthday because I wanted her to know that she's the greatest gift that I could ever ask for on my birthday. You know? yeah. That's some smooth stuff, fellas. Yeah, that's that yeah, that smooth. You know? <laughs> Take notes, young fella. You know? <laughs> so I took her out to the beach. The sun was setting. There's a bunch of people around. Look, it was a beautiful scene. I tell y'all what, the ocean was not the only thing that was wet that night, okay? I promise. <laughs> Sex, what's up, my man? <laughs> guys having sex, man, for sure. <laughs> so I proposed to her, she said yes. People went crazy, I'm getting high fives, hugs, I'm kissing babies, I signed some boobs. Never signed boobs before. <laughs> Earlier I told you I didn't even seen boobs at one point. Now I'm signing them, this is wild. He just pulled them out. He didn't care who saw it, it was wild, man. <laughs> he had his own Sharpie, I was like, all right, big fella, let's do this, man. <laughs> Some dudes came down from a bar. They were like, yo, we saw what you did, man. Congrats, come drink with us. They paid for our food, drinks, the whole evening. It was beautiful, right? Now the next day, me and my lady went out to dinner at a classy spot and I got the bill. 
I was like, baby, let me see the ring real quick. I got an idea. She said, what you need it for? I said, I bought it. Don't be stingy, just give it to me, okay? Y'all, she gave me the ring. I got down, proposed again in this restaurant. The place went nuts. We got free champagne, okay? <laughs> Genius, bro. <laughs> Manager came from the back. He was like, sir, I just wanted to say thank you so much for choosing our restaurant for this once in a lifetime experience. I was like, of course, man. Olive Garden is like our favorite spot. Bro. <laughs> we love you guys, man. We'll have the tiramisu for dessert, brother. I appreciate it. Y'all, I proposed to this girl nine times in six days, okay? <laughs> Best idea I've ever had. And hey, you guys have been absolutely amazed. My name is James Hank. I'm the third. Thank you.